Hi, I'm Dell Suggs and I'm here to share with you some basic ideas about recruitment for your organization. Recruitment is vitally important because you've got to constantly replacing the members that you lose through attrition and it's really the responsibility of every good officer to plan on replacing himself. So re recruitment is really the core of what you do as an officer within your organization. Recruitment is also very important because you've got to have members, the raw labor, to move your organization towards the goals that you've set for yourself. Now there are actually four different phases of recruitment and we'll talk about all four of these phases as we move through this program. There are actually four different parts of recruitment. First of all is defining your organization. It's very important that you define your organization so that your potential members know who you are and what you're all about. The second phase of recruitment is promoting your organization. You want your organization to be so well known that people will come to you wanting to join your organization. Now you realize we're at, we're at item number three and we haven't even talked about real recruitment yet. Well the third part of recruitment is actually recruiting. This is taking advantage of your, your, your campus club or involvement fair and actually recruiting new members. And the fourth part of the recruitment process is retention. What are you going to do with all those new members that you bring in? You've got to have opportunities to get them involved with your organization. So retention is the fourth part of the recruitment process. So the first step in the recruitment process then is defining your organization. Think long and hard about it, what exactly your organization wants to do, why you exist, your goals and the opportunities for your members to serve. Think long and hard about your mission statement. The Five Whys was created by Dr. Toyota from the Toyota Motor Company in the 1950s. He used it as a great way to get to the root cause of any problem or find the real source or purpose of any true organization. The process is very simple. You ask the question why five times. It seems that that is an arbitrary number, but it really is kind of magical. But when you ask the question why five times, you'll understand exactly why your organization exists. Let's take this as, as a quick example. I will say, my car won't start. You ask why. Because the battery's dead. You ask why the second time. Because the fan belt's broken. You ask why the third time. Because I haven't had my car serviced properly. You ask why the fourth time. Because I don't know any local mechanics. You ask why the fifth time because I haven't really made any friends in this area since I moved here to go to school. So the reason my car won't start is really because I haven't been out and made friends and, and created a social network in order to find a mechanic. It's not because the battery won't start. See, that's the root cause. Use this to understand what your organization really exists for and create a mission statement that's worthy of your organization. Along with, with defining your organization, define such factors as the perks that your members get. I mean, you've got to understand the old American Express commercial that used to say membership has its privileges. What privileges do your members get when they're part of your organization? Now let's talk about promotion. Why would you want to join an organization that you've never heard of? It's vitally important that you promote your organization amongst the students on your campus so that they're well aware of your organization and what you do. This is one way that you draw in new members that didn't even know originally that they wanted to be members of your organization. One of the first steps towards that is creating this merchandise material that we often refer to as swag, stuff we all get. Swag is the, is the, the, the merchandise that your club members wear that advertise and promote your organization. Things like jackets, things like t-shirts, caps, even items like pins and stadium cuffs, koozies, and, and the various things, little merchandise items that let people know about your club or organization. These can be vital means of really promoting your organization to other members of your student body. The next step in promoting your organization is to make sure that you get something uh, of interest about your club or organization in the campus newspaper. If you have a monthly newspaper, you, there should be an article about your organization in every single issue of the newspaper that comes out. Make sure that people know about the, the great honors and awards that your organization receives, about the good works that you do when you're involved in other activities around town. When you go to, to, to state and national conventions, make sure there's information about that in the newspaper. And make sure that everybody on your campus has heard of your organization. Now it's time for step three, the actual recruitment process. So think about how you can recruit new members for your organization. Where do you start with your recruiting? It's pretty obvious. You start first of all with your friends. And FOFs, F-O-F, which stands for Friends of Friends. 
So start by recruiting your friends and your friends of friends. This is your basic core group that will really form the basis of your recruitment and, and the, the new members that you will bring into your organization. Now the next step in the recruitment process is to take advantage of your campus club fair. Nearly every campus has a, a special program where every club has a table and they're allowed to recruit new members and tell other members of your student body about your club or organization. Sometimes it's called club fair, involvement fair, activity fair, club expo. It has a variety of names, but I'm sure you understand the program I'm talking about. There are several things you can do to have a really successful club fair on your campus. First of all, you need to make sure that you staff your table. It's not enough just to have a table at the, at the club fair. You actually have to have members there staffing your table, preferably two members. One person to be at the table to sign people up and a second member to actually walk through the crowd and recruit new members to come over to the table and learn about your organization. Second of all, you have to have materials at the table about your organization. So when people come to the table to learn about your club or organization, they can pick up these materials and take them back with them. You also need to have a sign-up sheet because you want these pr prospective new members to actually sign up and give you some basic information about them. Their name, their phone number, their email address, and ways that you can contact them. Third, and this is often overlooked, you want to invite these new members to come to your meeting. We sometimes forget it's not enough just to tell people about your organization. You need to invite them to become a member of your organization and try it out at your very next meeting. Now you want to follow that up with some, some real hardcore pursuit of this potential new member. You do this by actually touching base with them after you've, after you've met them at the event and perhaps when you invite them to that next meeting you might say let's meet and grab a cup of coffee before the meeting I can tell you more about our club and then we'll walk over to the meeting together. Make sure you follow up with an email, a phone call, a message, a Facebook message, but make sure that they know that they are Welcome to join your organization and to, that you're serious about your recruitment process. This is a very, very important part of the entire recruitment procedure. So now we're on to step four, and that is retention of these new members. If you practice the first three steps in the recruitment process, you'll have plenty of new members with, for your organization. However, they won't stay around long unless you follow some proper retention procedures. First of all, you've got to get your new members involved. You should always have a space available on every committee within your organization for new members. Get your new members involved immediately. The very first meeting they attend, you should assign them a task or a responsibility to fulfill. The sooner you get these new members involved, the sooner they will become an active member within your organization. Also make sure that you follow up with these, with these new members and deal with the retention process as far as keeping them plugged in with all the policies and procedures that you're doing, the different goals, and make sure that you keep them inspired to be members of your organization. So let's do a brief recap. The first step in the recruitment process is actually defining your club or organization. The second step then is to promote your club or organization amongst the members of your student body. The third step is the actual recruitment of new members, and the fourth step is retention. I hope this has been, has been a helpful webinar for you and you've been able to get some good ideas to help you recruit new members for your club or organization. New members are the lifeblood of your club. I'm Del Suggs. I'm an associate member of the APCA. If you have any questions about this or other topics you'd like to know about, please contact www.apca.com.